Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. June 1st, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. The Boston Globe comes to the defense of Judge Feely. I was waiting and waiting, and they finally did it. Um, all right, so if you missed it, my friends, I mean, this is incredible. This really is. You want to, you know, this to me is maybe even worse than the way Hollywood has been propping up and defending Samantha B or Joy Behar or Whoopi Goldberg or Michelle Wolf or in the news business, Joy Reid. This is even worse. This is, you want to talk about moon badism. You want to talk about radical leftism at its absolutely most insane and unhinged. This is it. So, in today's globe, irresp- actually, no, it was in yesterday's globe, right? Okay, so in yesterday's globe, this is a uh, op-ed piece by Nancy Gertner. Irresponsible attacks on a fine judge. <laughs> Samantha B is a hero. <laughs> Feely now, <laughs> he's a hero. Now, by the way, who is Nancy Gertner? Well, it's no surprise. She is a retired federal judge, so she's protecting one of her own. She's a part of the Hackerama, and she's also a professor at Harvard. She's a professor at Harvard Law School, and in a nutshell, here's essentially what she argues. She um, she says that the opiate crisis, you know, is it's 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 a serious issue, and she's very happy that you know we're taking it seriously. However, however, she blames Governor Baker, Jeff Deal, and State Representative Jim Lyons for daring to criticize Judge Feely's recent decision to free a notorious local heroin dealer, Manuel Soto Vettini. Now, she refers to viturpative columns, meaning mine, that's been calling out the judge, but she doesn't have the guts to call me out by name. Because what she and the Globe have been trying to do, it's obvious, the Globe has been trying to blackball me and blacklist me from this state because they're afraid of me. Well, anyway, she goes on in the column. So she praises Sato Vettini. This is incredible. So she's obviously, you can tell, she was on the phone with the judge. Feely's panicking. He sees that public pressure is mounting for him to go. He now has a bill in the state legislature demanding that he be impeached. Baker now is seriously considering about maybe having the courts move in and get rid of him. He sees now he's losing support among all of the prosecutors in Salem. He's losing support now among many of his own colleagues. The pressure is building and building and building. So obviously he picked up the phone. And he called up one of his hack friends, who, by the way, is on a vacation in Italy as we speak. How do I know this? I'll let you know in a couple minutes. But he called up a friend on vacation and said, you got to help me out here. So she basically now, he's a hero. Not only is Judge Feely a hero, but listen to this. Timothy Feely sentenced Sato Vettini to probation. For possession with intent to distribute 15 grams of heroin and a small amount of cocaine. Now, she doesn't mention the 40 bags, that it was 40 bags and three bags of cocaine. She's trying to make it seem like it was nothing. It was just a <laughs> Hey, just a little bit of powder. That's all. It's nothing. What are you really getting so upset about? It's nothing. It's nothing. She goes on to say, Sotto Vettini had no criminal convictions, just a dismissed drug possession charge from a decade ago. According to the evidence, here's the first lie, he had been dealing drugs for a month. Actually, no. According to the evidence and Salem Police, he had been dealing drugs for years. He was a notorious local heroin dealer dealing drugs on a day-to-day basis, and this was going on for freaking years. So that's lie number one. Number two, 
She then basically said that he made the right decision because had he sentenced him to prison, listen to this, according to a professor, um, <clears throat> to professor and former judge Nancy Gertner. So according to Professor Gertner, God forbid, if Sato Vatini went to prison, since he's a non-citizen, it would likely lead to his deportation as a result of his conviction. And why do that? According to her, listen to this, I swear to you, according to this, Vettini is a good, decent man. He's now a legal, permanent resident with a family and a job. He's a family man. Now, where they came up with this job is, is you know, beyond me, but anyway, so he's a, he's a job. And listen to this, although he lost his job when he was arrested, he found another after he was released on bail. No small task. He's basically a hero. He's a working man. He's got a job. That this what the heroin? The, what? What? Come on. He's got to make a few bucks on the side to, to, to support his family. She continues. Quote. He continued to support the woman he had met in high school and their two children. You mean the two children you had out of wedlock? You mean the girlfriend? You mean the girlfriend in which they're living in Section 8 housing? Where he lives with her? So it's under her name? So she can collect all the food stamps? She can get Section 8? She can get EBT and welfare? As this guy is dealing heroin? You mean that? That family? That's what you're talking about? Anyway, um, she then says that Judge Feely's decision to impose probation was or should have been unremarkable. Instead, it was greeted with protests. That's me now. Vituperative newspaper columns. Me. Most dangerous of all, <gasps> calls for his impeachment. She then said that the protesters appeared outside the Salem Superior Court. That was our rally. Calling for Judge Feely's impeachment. Governor Charlie Baker called Feely's sentence, quote, ridiculous and outrageous. Worse, in a moment that can only be called, quote, unquote, Trump light. In its resemblance to Trump's habit of trashing judges with whom he disagrees. Baker suggested that the courts deal with Judge Feely. Just as it had with the judge who was suspended for inappropriate sexual conduct in his chambers. That judge was sexually assaulting uh, uh, staffers. What inappropriate sexual conduct. He wasn't watching pornography during his lunch hour, uh, Professor Gertner. He was sexually assaulting women that worked for him at the freaking courthouse. But let that go. Inappropriate sexual conduct. But let that go. Not to be outdone, State Representative Jim Lyons, Republican of Andover, announced he was filing a resolution on calling Baker to remove Feely. Representative Jeff Deal, a Republican U.S. Senate hopeful, quickly boarded the impeach Feely bandwagon. She goes on to say that the worst thing you can do to stop the heroin epidemic is to put dealers in jail. And she says, for example, one year in state prison, let's say Sato Vettini was put in prison, where the government wanted Sato Vettini to go, costs $55,000, according, $55,170, according to the Vera Institute of Justice. Never heard of them, but let that go. How many addicts will be treated with that money? Is probation with likely deportation a better alternative on all fronts? As Judge Feely found, number one, he's not being deported. Number two, he's going to be out on the streets to deal again. So to her, that's a better solution. And then there is an entirely different cost. The incalculable cost of an unjustified attack on a judge. And she goes on to say, look at his distinguished record as a judge. 
Look at his distinguished record as a federal prosecutor. Again, no one ever does. The message, even to judges with life tenure, is clear. The way to avoid being criticized is to imprison more and more. It is always a one-way ratchet. This time, we can ill afford it. Here's the kicker. Governor Baker, you should know better. A couple of points, and then I want to throw it open to you. 617-266-6868. Look at how smug, arrogant, um, frankly, intellectually weak the entire piece is. It smacks of arrogant elitism. This sort of nose up in the air, tisk tisk. <gasps> Governor Baker, you ought to know better. The last thing we should do with drug dealers is send them to prison. That's just not the way. Oh, oh, I'm so smart. I'm so smart. Number one, had he been sentenced to prison, he would have been deported. So problem resolved. That's number one. Number two, he doesn't have a job. His job is dealing heroin. Furthermore, what she will refuses to acknowledge and confront in the piece, and I was going to challenge her on my show. How about Feely's long record? You're telling me it's a great record? Really? Daniel Bove, a, uh, uh, an accused child rapist and molester, he let Bove out. He let Kevin Williams out, uh, who had serious gun charges, resulting in the death of Corporal Eugene Cole. A policeman in Maine was gunned down because of what Feely did. Gangbangers he's let loose. Armed burglars he's let loose. Murderers he's let loose. Rapists he's let loose. Heroin dealers he's let loose. And suddenly this guy's a fine judge? She didn't touch any of the fundamental arguments used against him. None. None whatsoever. How about the Salem police captain who said that we know that Soto Vettini is responsible for dozens of overdoses? The man's a serial killer. And you're standing there defending Judge Feely? J defending the indefensible? And I'll tell you why the Globe ran this piece. Because Elizabeth Warren backs Judge Feely. And they're trying to give Judge Feely and Elizabeth Warren political cover for trying to defend the indefensible. So what did the Cooner man do? I had Brittany reach out to uh, Professor Gertner, and I challenged her to a debate on my show. And I can read to you the email that I sent to her. If you don't believe me, here's what we said. I want you to come on the show. And here's what we're going to do. I am going to give you seven minutes. I will only take five minutes. You will speak for two minutes. I said this. I will be potted down. I cannot interrupt you. You let me speak for two minutes. You cannot interrupt me. I will then give you two more minutes. I will take one. You take one. I take one. You take the final one. So you will have seven uninterrupted minutes. I will have five uninterrupted minutes. You will have more time than me. Nobody can cut each other off. Defend your column. Defend your argument. She emailed us back before the show. She's a coward. She's a co I'm calling her and the globe out. She's a coward. Her response, I'm on vacation in Italy. So I said to Brittany, fine, let's do the debate next week. I'm giving a talk in Vermont. Fine. When you come back from your talk in Vermont, by the way, you can call us on the phone. It's going to be a phoner. So you don't have to, you don't have to be in, in, in Massachusetts. No, 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 no. I'm then going to go to Washington. You don't want to debate me. I'm giving you seven minutes to my five. Seven to five. I will not cut you off. I will be turned down. The rules will be established. Defend Judge Feely on the air. She couldn't and she didn't because she's a coward. To the Boston Globe, you should be ashamed of yourselves. To Professor Gertner, you should be ashamed of yourself. 
You're everything that's wrong with the judiciary, everything that's wrong with the Ivy League, everything that's wrong with the moonbats in this state. The Boston Globe defends Judge Feely. Your reaction next. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. 2.30, actually 2.24, forgive me, right now. Okay, my friends, the Boston Globe goes where nobody else wants to go. They have now issued a defense of the indefensible, really, of Judge F.U. Feely, irresponsible attacks on a fine judge. It is by Professor Nancy Gertner of Harvard Law School, a former judge herself, a hack, I challenged her to come on my show for a debate. She chickened out. She's an absolute coward, like, frankly, all the liberals at the Boston Globe. Joining me now, he was singled out for attack in the piece, along with uh, Jim Lyons and Governor Baker, is none other than State Representative Jeff Deal, who will most likely be the Republican nominee for U.S. Senate to challenge Elizabeth Warren. Jeff, I got to ask you, my buddy, um, she takes a swipe at you, obviously. What did you make of the piece in the Globe? And what do you make of the fact that when I invited her for a debate, she didn't have the guts to come on? Well, if she's going to make the accusation she's making, she has to go on and defend herself. Because what she says in her article in the Globe is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, you, you know, you pointed out the fact that she was appointed as a federal judge under Clinton back in 94. Back in 2015, she wrote an article questioning the death sentence of uh, Johar Zernayev, uh, one of the marathon bombers. So this is sort of her modus operandi. She is extremely liberal as far as punishment on the criminals. And let me just tell you, another thing about this article she wrote is this false uh, argument she makes of, you know, should the money go to housing people in prisons or should it go towards recovery treatment for addicts? How about, in this case, both putting people in prison who are dealing the drugs, the heroin, like uh, Soto Vitini, okay, put them in prison, and then maybe you won't have to spend the money to uh, deal with recovery because of uh, addiction that he's causing in his neighborhoods. That's the one thing. And then she also talks about, uh, you know, her conclusion is, uh, clearly, uh, if you're a judge, you now have to uh, avoid being criticized by imprisoning people more and more. It's like a little kid taking his ball and going home and saying, oh, we're going to question this one judge. I mean, Jeff, how many times do the public actually question judges on their decisions in Massachusetts? I I've hardly ever seen it, and when we do, it's usually pretty egregious. But her response is, well, okay, now this is going to force judges to just sentence more and more. That's baloney. This guy is way out of line, Judge Feely, and what he's done with this case and in previous cases where he lowered bail and allowed someone to go to Maine who ended up killing a police officer. I I've just got to ask the question, what's the point of having officers on the street putting their lives on the line to arrest people if they're just going to have judges put them back out on the street? What's the point of having drug laws if the judges are going to ignore them? Uh, Jeff, th this response that she wrote in the Globe makes no sense, and it has false arguments all throughout. Why do you think she did it, Jeff? Well, I think you're right. She's defending one of her own. This is sort of judges circling the wagon and saying, hey, don't ever question us. You know, which, by the way... It's one of the few jobs in the state where nobody can question them. Once they're appointed as a judge, uh, it takes uh, an act of God to get them out. I mean, Jim Lyons filed that petition, uh, which I've signed, and uh, 36 total legislators have signed trying to get her out. Um, but, you know, it's going to take a vote by the House and Senate to get it to the governor's council and then to the governor. That is incredibly hard to do. And, uh, I, you know, again, it's very hard to get a judge out to begin with. But God forbid anybody question a judge on really bad decisions, especially a judge that repeatedly makes them, in her opinion. Uh, we are talking with State Representative Jeff Deal. He's also a candidate for the U.S. Senate uh, and I believe has a real shot at beating Elizabeth Warren. Um, I smell the hand of Elizabeth Warren behind this. I don't know if you agree with me or not, Jeff. Uh, she clearly will not call out this judge. I think the Globe is very frightened. That's why they did go after you in that piece. They're afraid you're going to use Judge Feely as a club, as a weapon, to beat Elizabeth Warren with, to show and expose her for what a fraud she is, not just on crime, but on the heroin opiate epidemic. And they're trying to give this judge some intellectual legitimacy and some intellectual cover. Am I wrong, Jeff? Well, Jeff, I mean, both Elizabeth Warren was a professor at Harvard, was getting paid $350,000 a year to teach one course. By the way, that course was bankruptcy. So if you went to Harvard and had to pay the high cost, of course, you're going to need to know bankruptcy because that's how, 
<laughs> That's how expensive it is to go there. But hey, you know, college education is expensive, Elizabeth Warren says, except here she is making money off of it all the time. Anyway, she uh, taught at Harvard, and so does uh, Judge Nancy Gertner. She teaches at Harvard as well, so it's no surprise, in my opinion, to find out if they uh, are friends and uh, have been talking about this case, because clearly, like you said, this is a case that's a highlight uh, during this election cycle of just how bad uh, things are with uh, judges and making sure that somebody who's serving in office, uh, somebody like a U.S. senator, should be providing leadership and saying, this judge has to go. We don't ask this very often, but in this case, you've got to make that exception and ask this judge to step down or else get him impeached. Um, Jeff, final question. We're up against it. Where do we go from here? We had a very successful rally. I know there are now more co-sponsors coming in uh, to this legislation being pushed by you and Jim Lyons and others to get Judge Feely impeached. We moved Baker on the issue to condemn Feely and his decision. Where do we go from here to get this judge removed from the bench? Well, I mean, I would say one thing to do is the Impeach Judge Feely page on Change.org. There's a website, Change.org. You go there and type in Impeach Judge Feely. You can sign up there to have him impeached or, or request that he be impeached. Uh, but the other thing, too, is call your legislators, your state reps and your state senators, and ask them to sign on to Jim Lyon's uh, uh, resolution because it has to pass the House and Senate to then – uh, go to the governor and governor's council for consideration. That's the only way we can do this and put it in our own hands. Uh, other than that, you know, we maybe should have some more rallies because we want to make sure this judge does the right thing himself and steps down. If he sees the people of Massachusetts are, are infuriated, which they have every right to be, and we saw hundreds and hundreds of people last Thursday up in Salem outside his courthouse, uh, that message should be clear. And if he hasn't gotten the message now, we got to keep sending it. We are talking, we have been talking with State Representative Jeff Deal, candidate for the U.S. Senate to take on Elizabeth Warren. Jeff, as always, dynamite stuff. And thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report. Thanks, Jeff. And if people want to get involved with me and, and what I'm doing, dealforsenate.com is the way to go. So I hope dealforsenate.com, D I E H L, dealforsenate.com. Jeff, keep up the great work, buddy. Thanks, Jeff, and thanks, Kuta Country. God bless you. Bless me. I'm going to do it right now. I am issuing a public challenge to Professor Nancy Gertner. I will debate her on Judge Feely anytime, any place, anywhere. She can pick the forum. She can pick the, the venue. She can pick the moderator. You cannot defend the indefensible. You're a coward, and I'm calling you out. If you've got the guts to defend to debate me, I challenge you right now. I guarantee you she won't take it. She will not take me up on it, but here's the here is the challenge I'm issuing it. Samantha B's TBS show is losing advertisers. It's about time. Evan Heidenrich is in the RKO newsroom with those details. Tell me how bad is it, Evan? Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. 237 here on the great WRKO. Okay, I promise we're going to take some of your calls. Also, a house of horrors in Springfield. And again, was an incompetent, corrupt, liberal judge in Massachusetts to blame for a serial killer that struck in Springfield, Massachusetts. Unbelievable story. But first, joining us now, as he always does at this time, is none other than the co-host of the Kelly Financial Services Show, good friend of mine, John Boudris. You can hear the Kelly Financial Show on WRKO every Saturday, i.e. tomorrow, 9 a.m. until noon. John, how are you, my buddy? I am a bit sunburned and black fly bitten but other than that i'm doing well <laughs> john i've got to ask you uh, everybody's talking about it the whole country's talking about it roseanne barr should she have been fired by abc for her inappropriate disgusting tweet about valerie jared I, no of course she shouldn't but you know i like your idea about another network picking up the show but in, you know in practice that may run into some copyright speed bumps, but it, it's already way ahead of itself in terms of marketing. I mean, there's hundreds of millions of dollars built into the advanced marketing of it already, and if some network did pick up the show, every talk show, every newscast, they'd be talking about it all summer. 
So it, it would be a hit right out of the gate. But my advice to her would, would to go one better and to apply directly for a job with President Trump. He should hire her as part of his communications team. Make her almost like a semi-cabinet position. It would drive the libs nuts. It would be perfect. And it would be a career move up for her, and she could just flip the bird to ABC. (laughs) John, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, buddy, I've got to ask you, are you, what's, I'm excited now. What's on tap for tomorrow's show, my friend? Tomorrow is the, tomorrow is nuts and bolts Saturday. We've got the whole Kelly financial team and we're touching all the bases of retirement planning from portfolio management to insuring against the high costs of nursing home care, tax planning. We've, we've got the whole rainbow. So it'll be a, a good show. Uh, buddy, I know you have events scheduled in the next couple of weeks. Um, have you filled up every seat, or are there still seats available for the event on the 14th and the event on the 28th? Well, the 14th event, the event on Flag Day at the New Davios, there may be a waiting list for it. I, if anyone's interested in I'd say call now, you might get in. Um, I, I know it's a real popular one. There, I know there's a few seats available for the 28th of June in um, Burlington at the Tuscan Kitchen. But do give a call right now uh, at 888 800 1881 and make that reservation right now. My friends, uh, if you're heading towards retirement, this is a personal invitation from me. I'm telling you, you want to go to the Kelly Financial Services, these informative dinner events. They're incredible. You can have an incredible meal. Number one, you can eat really well. Number two, you're going to listen to some of the top tax retirement experts, really help you prepare your retirement nest egg. Uh, they're, hopefully, they can still maybe squeeze you in for June 14th at the new Davios in Braintree. The other one is going to be on Thursday, June 28th at the Tuscan Kitchen in Burlington. Please call now, make your complimentary reservation, 888-800-1881, 888-800-1881. And John Boudris has got a phenomenal show. He co-hosts it with Kelly Kelly. You can listen to it tomorrow, 9 a.m. until noon. John, as always, great stuff. Buddy, watch out for the mosquitoes. I shall. They, they'll be out in force tonight, and I have onions to plant. So I'm getting- <laughs> John, take care and have a great weekend, buddy. Okay, bye. Dan. Okay, bye-bye. 617-266-6868. Okay, before I go to Springfield, huge story, uh, going national, even international. Judge Feely, the globe now rushes to his defense. What do you make of it? Let's go to Jerry on the Cape. Jerry, you're up first. Go ahead, Jerry. Comrade. Comrade, how you are, my friend? Razvoyet. We do not use that word in Russia. <laughs> Jeff, a couple of quick points, and then I want to get to something that you mentioned early in the show, which was absolutely important and brilliant. Jeff Sessions has appointed all new U.S. attorneys nationwide, you know, and they're going to begin prosecuting judiciary misconduct and malfeasance. All of these illegals and these refugees and criminals are their base and their insulation for political, the political ruling class. But, Jeff, you know, you said something really poignant early in the show. You said that the president sees everything slipping away in the paradigm shift. You're exactly right. He's going to take advantage of it. Jeff, last week, Hussein met with Jay-Z and Beyonce Knowles to reel in the black community against President Trump for the midterms. The Democratic hold on the black voters is slipping away. And Jeff, you believe that the past and the present is is interconnected, don't you? Yes. Did you know that Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan both wrote letters to President Trump encouraging him and telling him one day he would be president of the United States? I did not know that, Jerry. Do you know who the last president was that chose to try to stop the deep state? I would assume it's Reagan. JFK. Oh, and you're saying, man, he ended up uh, yeah. Dallas. But who was, one, who was one of President Trump's best friends, do you know? No, tell me, Jerry. JFK Jr. So you're saying that maybe he's carrying the torch for JFK? I absolutely believe it. 
Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you for that call, my friend. Uh, all right, my friends, it's breaking right now as I'm speaking to you. Uh, I'm telling you, winning, winning, winning. So listen to this. You now have the new May un- uh, unemployment numbers, 3.8% unemployment, the lowest in 18 years. Wages are now shooting up. They're rising for the first time in God knows how long. And uh, historic unemployment numbers for the black community. Record low unemployment for the African-American community. Well, guess what? President Trump has just come out of a meeting with a senior North Korean official. The meeting with Rocket Man on June 12th in Singapore is back on. So, like a real estate developer, walked away from the deal, said, I don't like this. And he forced them to come to the negotiating table again. He squeezed Rocket Man. And now they're going back. The meeting is back on June 12th in Singapore. They'll be meeting mano to mano. Now, I'm telling you, my friends, if he can pull off a deal with the North Koreans, he will go down in history as one of the greatest foreign policy presidents we've ever had. How will the Democrats beat him then? 617-266-6868. 617-266-6868. Rob in Charlestown. You're up next. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, Jeff. Good afternoon. Hi. You know, you're, you're sitting here talking about Judge Feely. Yes. I'll tell you the hypocrisy of it all. I uh, ran into, worked 20 years in law enforcement, ran into a little bit of a problem with medication myself and ended up on the other side of the fence. I uh, got arrested for a lawsuit charge, went before Judge Feely. <clears throat> to make an example of me, uh, actually said that in court, that I should have known better with my background, wanted me to do all of the time that the statute would have uh, made me do. The point, the reason why I call is this gentleman is, you know, I I hate to use the word gentleman, the the person that we're talking about that should have gone away doesn't go away. And someone like myself, again, I, I did what I was convicted of. Uh, I don't deny that, but my life was turned upside down in, in an instant based upon this gentleman or this judge wanting to send me away to make an example of me because I had worked in law enforcement. And, you know, that's why it says to me that we need to have judges elected and then it, it needs to be term limits. This is just absolutely positively crazy. Rob, can I tell you the truth? Can I be really yeah. candid with you on the air? Sure. You know why he went after you? I, I'm really, I, look, I feel very bad for you, but I got to tell you. Number one, you're an American citizen. This guy was an immigrant. This Manuel Sato Vettini. Number two, you're a former law enforcement person. He hates cops. Well, the, he the hates law and order. It, the worst part about it, Jeff, is uh, what had happened with me. Is I, I retired, did the 20 years, and I had retired for a number of other reasons. And he wanted to be uh, prosecuted to go after my retirement, where my, my crime had been committed after... I was already done with, you know, working in law enforcement. Oh, I know. You were a former police officer, and he wanted to go after you. And let me ask you this, Rob. Did he say to you you're a great family man? Uh, no. Did he yes. say that you got, you know, a wonderful wife or girlfriend, and you have children, and you're just trying to make a living? He didn't He didn't say that about you. I, I can't believe he didn't say that about you, Rob. Yeah, he actually, the, the comment was, uh, your family should be ashamed of you. And uh, mm. my mm. father being law enforcement as well. Rob, you see, what you should have done was this. Should have changed your name. Should have said you're just a, a green card guy. You're just an immigrant from the Dominican Republic. You've got a wife on Section 8. They're on EBT and welfare. You've got two kids. And you're just dealing heroin uh, to... Not that you did were, but I'm just saying, whatever your crime was. L- larceny, whatever it was. You were just doing it to feed your family because you're a family man. That's what my, you should my, have said, Rob. My crime was that I had got... Having 30... Hand surgeries. I ended up being addicted to painkillers, and then I went from uh, shutting the door on people to having the door shut on me. And uh, believe me, it was a life-altering event. Rob, what a, what are you are you clean and sober now? Rob, we lost Rob. Okay, I guess you didn't want to answer that question. I was hoping he was going to say yes, because I was going to say, God bless you, and please stay clean. But anyway. Uh, okay, Russ in Boston. You're up next. Go ahead, Russ. First of, all, first of all, Jeff, we've known the Boston Globe for many years has been a liberal rag. But it's even worse now, because let's face it, 
John Henry bought the gold so his wife could have a toy. And every report of the works for the gold is a bum kisser as far as uh, his wife is concerned. That's all. The, and this, this kind of stuff would appease her, appease her without question, all right? Now, all these reporters, none of them are creative. And I'll tell you right now, if, if you put me in charge, I, w- I guarantee you I would cut the crime rate by 50%. Anybody that has committed murder, anybody that's a drug dealer, okay, you'd serve at least 10 years in a foreign prison in a third world country, which would probably cost us 25% of what it costs us now, okay, and then you would know this would have, you would be cut off from your family, everybody else, you would be treated like an exile, okay, and that would definitely, no doubt in my mind, cut crime. And, and, and that's the kind of really prison reform that you need in this country. Now, as far as um, the other idiot there and her comments, you know, Jeff, there's no question, women find the C-word extremely offensive. And any woman that doesn't recognize that is a fool. Now, as far as uh, Forrest Gump's mother is concerned, okay, first of all, she is so lacking in intellectual speech. If you ever heard or seen any of her interviews, okay, she is so weak. She really, truly, is a, is a, is a living, breathing, uh, 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 and I can't even think of her name. Archie Bunker's wife. What the hell was her name? Wasn't it Edith? Edith, Edith, Edith Bunker in the in, in the movie. Seriously. So anything that comes out of her mouth is nothing but garbage. Amen, brother. 617-266-6868. Okay, my friends. House of Horrors in Springfield, and could it have been prevented? Unbelievable story, next. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. 255 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, this story is huge, and I think it's going to get even bigger over the weekend. Okay, Springfield, Massachusetts. Police spotted a man with a woman in a car. We now know the man's name is Stuart Weldon. He had a broken taillight. They decided to try to pull him over. The uh, Stuart Weldon in the car began then to run away from the police or engage in a car chase. The police tracked him down after a long car, car chase where he rammed into a police cruiser. When they arrested him, They found a woman beside him yelling and screaming. A woman who had been held captive and tortured for a month by Stuart Weldon saying, quote, unquote, I never thought I would get away. She broke down in tears, started to thank the police, saying, you saved my life. She was then taken to the hospital where she told police, and then doctors have verified her story, that she was kidnapped, held captive by this animal for over a month, where he repeatedly raped her, apparently beat her with a hammer, and stabbed her 18 times in her abdomen. She was convinced that she was eventually going to die. Police then got a phone call from this guy's mother, saying at the house that he lives in, he lives with his mother, and apparently the house is under her name, apparently though other family members live there as well, that she began to notice a foul smell or odor. They went to the house, searched it, uh, did an extensive search on the premises. They discovered three dead bodies in the garage and in the basement. The police are now saying that this man clearly is a serial killer. He has now been arrested, and here's the kicker. Of course now he can't be put on bail unless they put him in front of Judge Feely. They put him in Judge Feely, this guy's walking on bail, okay? But he also had other alleged crimes, uh, uh, other charges against him, and he was allowed on those charges to walk on bail. 
And what were those charges, you may ask? Were they, I don't know, jaywalking or, uh, I don't know, something? No. In 2015, he was charged with assault and battery. And then he was charged again with assault with a dangerous weapon. And yet again, he was allowed to walk the streets. And now, because of this, we know that of at least three people he's killed, another woman that he repeatedly sexually assaulted, raped and beat with a hammer. And the question now is, does the body count end with three and one woman raped? Or are there more dead bodies and more women that he's raped? We're going to find this out, hopefully, over the weekend. But again, again... We keep letting criminals with records as long as my arm, rap sheets as long as my arm, we keep allowing them to walk on our streets. It's time to go after the liberal judges. We have a serial killer, or at least we had, a serial killer in Springfield. So please, please, I'm begging the police. Don't put this guy in front of Judge Feely. If you do, he's going to be walking the streets again. No bail. Revoke all of his bail. And then, if you don't, I know we don't have the death penalty, so lock him up. Lock him up and throw away the key. All right. Ah, where did the show go today, Brittany? It just flew by. All right, I got to go, my friends. I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend. Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer. And together, we're cleaning up the liberal bull. The Cooner Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. 888-800-1881. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 100.7 WZLX HD2 Boston, and iHeart Radio Station. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.